and we are live. Happy Friday! Yay! Okay. Yeah, hope everyone's had a great week. I had the most phenomenal week because my birthday, and I think birthdays just seem to go on. So I have I've had a whole amazing, beautiful week of, of birthday celebration, celebration of life, which uh, I think is very relevant for our topic today. So the topic today is happiness is a choice. So it's not a right, it's not an expectation, it's a choice, but it requires work. So it's not just like, oh, just because I woke up today and I'm smiling, I'm, I'm happy. No, it's got to be, a, it's conscious work that you need to make happen, right? You need to work at it. I am Bridget from Shift One Degree. And I'm Dana from Big Dunk Consulting. So the tips we're going to share with you today are around happiness as a choice. And the first one, which is which always, always comes up, I think, with everything around personal development and personal growth, is gratitude. Be grateful. And I don't know about you, but but this morning, like I had a bath and I was like, it's amazing. And last night I got into this warm bed and I had electric blanket and I was like, it's amazing. And it really is about being grateful for whatever you have, whatever it is. So I've actually had yesterday a live one in a different language. And the lady over there said some nice thing that I'll connect to the grateful. She said, every morning when you get wake up in the morning, write to yourself five things that you're happy with, that are going to make you happy today, that you're going to be grateful for them today. It can even be um, the morning coffee. It can be whatever you want, even a smile from your partner, whatever. But just say five things that, you know, going to make you happy today and going to help you to be grateful. Because that's part of it. You know, like I myself, I'm also always saying thank you not only for what I've got, but also for the challenges that I've got in life. Because this is how I grow. If I won't have the challenge, I always stay in one line. And that's not where I want to take my life to. So I'm even embracing this. Yeah. Easy, easier <laughs> said than done, but yes, yes, I, I, I do. Yeah, I, no, it's tough. That's I why it's called growing yeah. pains, right? So it's it hurt, it hurt, it hurt yeah. but like you need it. So you can mm -hmm. also show us in the comments here below, what are you grateful for? Um, yes. The second one, which is my favorite, because that's me, carry a smile. <laughs> and yeah. I really believe in this, because my saying when someone tells me to describe my, my brand is about that, like, you know, a smile is the shortest, like, distance between two dots. That's what connects between the two dots. Mm -hmm. If I meet someone and I smile, that change everything on their side. And that's the thing, like, you know, if you smile to the world, the world will smile to you. And that's how it goes. And if I'll come to you and you'll be so grumpy and miserable and I'll come and I'll smile and come with a nice attitude, automatically it's going to impact you one way or another or you're going to smack me in my face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've noticed since uh, doing my bi-weekly networking events with Helen, who's a laughter yoga coach. And so we start off the session with laughter yoga and it, it, like every single time, I mean, you just, you know, you kind of start and everyone's kind of sitting there waiting and then, you know, she does her thing. It's like only just a few seconds, a few minutes, whatever. And it's like, you end up laughing. And then we talk about something around personal development and then we end it with a, with a laughing yoga. But it's just, it just makes life so light. And I was sharing in the group yesterday, which I want to share again today. I, I shared this thing on Facebook where I, I think the, the guy's called the Kifness, something like that. Anyway, it's very, very entertaining, and, and they're talking about, he's talking about, um, I think it was him, that if Cyril was Mexican, how he would be doing his speech. And it was so, so, so funny. And I think if we can I look at the- I'm talking line. about this guy. I know who you're talking about. Oh, who you? So there's this guy that every time they put him and link him to different topics, but his laugh is addictive. You, it's what? like you're hearing a baby laughing that you automatically want to laugh with him. That's yeah. the style. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing better than smiling and laughing. It just makes life okay. You know, you were like, like there's lockdown and then there's load shedding and then people can't drink and people can't get cigarettes, but it's still okay. You can still laugh about it, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's what he was saying, which I thought was great. So the next one is about affirmation. And I think affirmation is very, very important because the opposite of that is when I think we all have a tendency to, to 
I don't know, put ourselves down or be dismissive of ourselves or, or say negative things. And so to do the opposite of that is affirmation and have positive affirmation. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, definitely, you know, and that's what we all look for, the positive stuff in our life, you know. It's so easy. It's like I was reading in the book of Osho that, you know, as human beings, we're always looking for the, um, like to be miserable in a way. We're always looking how we can be blessed in everything and so many things that we're actually missing the point of enjoying the small stuff, you know. Be grateful for all the little things and, you know, just be happy. So yeah. Really resonate with this. Um, the next one is to actually wake up on your own terms. And I really like it because, you know, you, when you wake up just because you wanted to wake up and you're not stressing, like even if you know that you need to be ready for something like early in the morning. So wake up before, like on your own terms, take the time. If you're the kind of person that needs to take your time, make sure you're getting it, you know, make sure you don't start a day like in a chaos. Right, mm -hmm. that's gonna impact the rest of the day. That's gonna have impact if you're gonna be grumpy for the rest of the day, or are you gonna be happy and smiling or not? And that's part of it. Um, if you got the opportunity to wake up every day at ten o'clock in the morning and then start working, so do it. Why not? Who cares? You know, do what's right. We just spoke about it before we started that. Bridget, for example, she likes to go to sleep early and wake up early, and I'm the opposite. I need to go. I'm going to sleep very late. Although I wake up early and I wake up on my own terms, you know, I'm, I'm super fine with us and I'm chilled and I'm taking my time. And sometimes I'm even just working from bed for a bit because this is my term. This is how I want the day to start. So I'm fine with it. Um, I've never had to use an alarm, even when I was getting up at ridiculous really? hours. Never, 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 never. And because I've never had to use an alarm, I, I just don't, look, I get it. Some people need to, and I totally get that completely. I just... I always feel that an alarm is really bad for you because you're in this deep sleep and then suddenly you've got this, whether it's a song or whatever it's going, but suddenly you have this thing waking up and I, I just believe that can't be good for you. It must give you such a fright to go, oh, all right, okay, okay, wait, I'm awake, I'm awake. You know, no matter what the sound is, I think waking up to an alarm can't be good for your okay, well. You know what? Let's do something. So we've got people watching us live on a watch party and people watching us live. If you are sleeping with alarm, you have an alarm, put one in the comments. If you actually don't write two, I want to see how many people actually don't have an alarm. I That's the first time I'm always having an alarm no matter what. Most wow. of the time. And just to make sure, like even for today, because sometimes I even want to stay more longer in bed and I'm losing track of time. So that's how I know. And who doesn't use the snoozing? I know I am for sure. Yeah, no, I've never had. So actually, I'm with you. It'd be very interesting to see who does and who doesn't because I never have used an alarm. I just, my body clock just kind of goes away. One, if you wake up with alarm. Two, if you don't mm. use the alarm at all. I want to see. Yes. And while you're doing that, the next one, and I actually love this one, is to stop complaining. Because I think when when you're around people that are complaining, Oh my gosh, it says nothing. There's nothing more boring, there's nothing worse. Whereas when you can look at actually the things that do work and the things that you are grateful for, you're not focusing on the complaining because complaining is a waste of time. That's just my feeling. I'll tell you what, I think like it's a human in human nature to complain. And I'm Israeli, so we are even more used to complain and to criticize on everything. It's like nothing is good as well. Let me just say, we're, we're pretty good too, like really. Mm -hmm. But like when I look at this, I'm like always saying, is it going to actually help me? Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to sit now and moan and complain, will that going to help me with the issue that I'm experiencing? No, I'm just going to be more miserable. I'm just going to feel more sorry for myself. I'm just going to see the negative and I won't find a way to go out outside of it. So, you know, why to do it right i like so for me yeah. i don't get it like i understand when you want to feel the need when you have the need to complain that's fine but don't let it control you don't let it like you know dictate how you're gonna deal with the issue or stuff with life so it's just gonna make you, you don't want to spend time i don't i don't have any single person in my world i don't have any friends who spend their time complaining because i personally do not want to spend hours on end with people that are just constantly complaining because like what's what's i may as well watch the news then i mean what's the point like seriously it's just for me that's just so negative just complaining you know there's there's always a solution 
There is. And before we're moving to the next one, I just want to say that if there's someone here, uh, so what we're doing every Tuesday, we're going live here and we're talking about marketing. So if you have any topic questions that you want us to answer, is it the different social media platforms, how to get more business opportunities, any topic, just write it down in the comments. And that's going to be the topics on the Tuesday that we do marketing. And every Friday we do on the personal development side. So if you also have topics there, you want to talk about anxiety, procrastination, anything, that's your time. And if someone want to go live with us, um, for us to give him like tips on his business, on his life, from a personal development and marketing side, just send us a private message or you can put your details in the comment below. And we're going to contact you and you're going to go live with us. So it's free of charge. So why not, right? Join us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next one, and we're talking about happiness is a choice, is that, you know, practice one life, improving discipline, you know? If we can improve the discipline, if we can say to ourselves, those are the things that we need to commit to and have something to work towards to, it's just going to help us, you know, it's just going to help us improve ourselves. Because um, basically life is a journey, you know, um, mm -hmm. and every little thing we do and experience in life is part of our journey. And I'm as a marketing person, you know. I always believe that we all have a certain story behind our brand and that's part of it. So, you know, it's part of the journey. So if you have some stuff and I always say, do a SWOT analysis to yourself, learn what's your weaknesses, what's your strengths, the challenges. And that's part of it. If you see it as a negative thing and you want to improve it, that's the time, you know, make it happen. And you're going to feel so happy after, not only because, you know, you conquer that part, and also mm -hmm. you see the improvement and see how it's going to impact your life. It's just a cycle. So I think also if you, um, I've had a, this, this a week of just doing like, you know, having, I had my eyes test yesterday and I had very, uh, various things done. Cause I think it's important these things to do every, you know, a few years, check everything out. And a, a big thing is, um, so for me, I've just turned 47. And so things, you know, things kind of make it a bit, bit of a, Things change slightly as you get older and you have to be more mindful about your eyes and various things. And, you know, a big thing is definitely lifestyle. And, and that's exactly people that I've gone to see this week for various things. That's exactly what they said. You know, lifestyle is, is really, really important. And when you make something a habit, it doesn't become a discipline. It just becomes a habit. It becomes a way of life. So, yeah, I think if it's for the betterment of you, body, mind and soul, why not? You know, why not? Because yeah. that ties into the next one, which is our strengths. So if you know what you're good at, and I, I, I definitely by this stage of my life, I really know where my strengths lie and I really know where my challenges lie. And I always say that when I, when I talk about say yes, that I do part-time work for and we have a, a team, there's a team of us. And each person brings a different strength to the team. And as a team, we are, it's, a, it's an amazing team. And if we were one person, my gosh, maybe we'd even be perfect, you know? But as individuals, we don't all have the same strengths. And, and just focus on what you are good at and don't worry about where your challenges lie. Outsource those. That's what I believe. No, so that's why I really recommend. And if someone wants, like, I'm going to also put, like, a link to, like, a template of a SWOT analysis. But really do it, you know. When mm. you have your own business, you want to know what's your weaknesses. You want to know what's your challenges because those are the things you won't commit to as part of your message in your business. That's part of the thing that you're going to put to yourself as something that you want to, you know, overcome. And you can find, like, overcoming it, it can also be, like, even let's say if you're procrastinating things, there's a lot of softwares and apps that you can use that will keep on reminding you to do stuff, that will help you manage it, you know, like your schedule. Well, I don't think fully agree with you there on the on working on the strengths like maybe some of them but uh, but i am also thinking that we've only got so many hours in a day there's only you know the things we enjoy if i don't enjoy doing something and i'm not good at it i swear to you i'd rather pay somebody else to do it and for them to do it and i can focus on the things that i love to do and that i'm really good at yeah, but that's the part of it because basically it's what I'm saying. So you can either overcome it by finding a software or something that will remind you or you can outsource it. Yeah. But that's how you're going to actually overcome it. But you need to be aware for what's your weaknesses, what's your challenges. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware, if you're not honest with yourself, how can you actually grow, you know, how you can actually even grow your business? Because sometimes we don't even get it, but like small stuff can take us to our weakness and then we don't know how to deal with this. And then we can actually destroy our brand, you know, get a bad reputation because 
we didn't commit to something and the expectations yeah. were not the same. Um, which actually also links to the next one, which is to accomplish one important task. And you know, we spoke about it so many times in different podcasts. About, you know, get the little wins, you know, put a, yeah. like, yourself a task or two for the day that that's a must for you to do today. Mm -hmm. right? Those are the things that you want to do and complete. And look at the small wins. Don't look at the big wins. Yeah. It's not no. about the big wins in life. It's the small ones. I actually love that. I, I have every every Thursday I have a mentoring session uh, as being as part of Say Yes, which is which is amazing. And in there, I'm I'm really good at at saying to my mentor, like he'll say, Oh, this is this, and I'll say, and I'm flipping amazing because I actually managed to do this, this, and this. And he's like, Wow, like yeah, that is pretty good, you know. So like I think when you do something, whether it's phoning an extra person, I don't know, um, writing in a journal, whatever it is, but when you do something, like acknowledge it and be proud of yourself for doing it because that's important. It is, and you know what? Having a business, we keep on saying it's a roller coaster. You up and you're done, and there will be so many times that you maybe think of giving up, right? That I'm done. It's not working. I don't know if I can do it. That's it. And even like even relationships and stuff, but you know, look at the little wins, like the small ones. That things are gonna happen. Okay, that's the reminder I needed to why do what I do. I can keep on doing it. That's the yeah. reminder of why I'm staying here in this relationship or things. Look at the small things. Look at the small victories. So just every time, accomplish at least one small task that is important for you that's gonna help you to promote yourself, and you can do it. Mm. Yes. I'm actually my my next bi weekly networking event is on this particular topic. So for people who who would like to actually discuss this in a in a in a networking um, situation or event, then yeah, I will, I'll put the link in. Cool. So you're just gonna sum it all up, like we are talking about happiness is a choice. So how you can actually work it out? Yeah. So should we should we go through each one? Yes. So the first one is being grateful. Yes, carry a smile. <laughs> Daily affirmation. Wake up on your own terms. And you still didn't reply to us if you wake up with a uh, an alarm or not. I just want to know. I'm intrigued to see how many people actually don't have an alarm in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop complaining. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, improving discipline. Discipline. <laughs> And focus on your strengths. And accomplish one important task. The little wins, the small victories that we have. Yeah. And then we'll be back on Tuesday and we will be discussing something in relation to marketing. So I want to know what you guys want to talk about. Do you want me to give you tips about Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook groups, um, maybe even newsletters? Write down. What do you feel like talking about on Tuesday? What do you want to learn more from the tips and the tricks that I've got to offer you? And there's lots, or maybe even Twitter. Choose the platform, no. choose the topic. No, and could be quite good is what is realistic when, so say you, you start a Facebook group or you start Instagram or whatever the case is, what is a realistic expectation to create some kind of interest following, um, generate business, whatever the case is, what is a realistic time frame? How, you know, whether with, with the different platforms, maybe choosing a platform and going, okay, so I've opened an Instagram account. What is my realistic expectation of my growth, of my maybe people coming to coach with me, whatever the case is, but what is realistic about creating the awareness? Does that make sense? It is. It is. But I'll answer it quickly because there is no such thing as something realistic uh, that like is generic. Okay, so oh. for every business, it's something different. And what you need to always remember, and that's how we're going to use it to sum it up. You know, when you look at the different marketing tactics you've got to use, the different social media platforms, it's not a matter of how many people have subscribe to your newsletter of how many people are following you in this different social media is bottom line are those people active are those people becoming from a potential client to clients and that's the thing we need to focus on 
Um, so you can well, have even followers. What? But maybe we focus on that then. Okay. Maybe we focus on that. Like, how do you the from a marketing perspective, going from the followers to becoming clients? Anyway, we'll discuss it, but we will be back on if Tuesday. If you want to the topic, for those of you listen, as I said, here on live and here on the watching party, write it down and we'll mm -hmm. do it. Seriously, uh, we're sharing the knowledge. This is a great time for each and every one of us to start giving, you know, share the knowledge, put it out there. I'm more than happy to share my knowledge and experience from more than 10 years in marketing and global marketing. So use it. So we're well, going we to wish you Yes. So have a good Bye. Bye.